Alright, g'day guys and welcome back today to another Obsidian video. Today we're going to be looking at how to create a soundboard uh, inside of Obsidian, which is, you know, something as a semi-digital dungeon master is really, really cool to have, right? Like, we, we play at the table, we roll real dice, we have a TV in the middle of the table where we display maps, and part of the benefit of having that TV there is that I can control sound through it. So I quite often already play sound to my players. Um, currently, I think the most commonly used application that I use is uh, Ark and Forge. Um, and before that, I used to use Sirenscape. Now, the thing I like about uh, Sirenscape, though, is it has this really cool functionality that enables you to trigger the sounds from an external application. I don't want to use the actual application, and that's because I've got a lot going on on my screen. All right, Obsidian is my primary DM tool. Uh, outside of that, I have Arc and Forge over on another screen that I'm using to control the map. Um, but I am controlling that map from the one screen that I have in front of me. Because I have a three screen setup, right? I have one, uh, the TV and the table in the middle that the players will sit around and they can see the map on it. That's got a, uh, a player uh, view, I guess you would say, of the map uh, for the players to use. But then I've got my DM screen. That's primarily running Obsidian, and ideally I'd like to stay in Obsidian as much as possible. Uh, also on that screen I have Arc and Forge running, which I, I utilize to obviously control the map. Um, and I do control music through there. Um, but then there's a third screen that I use for the, the player view that I send um, images to the players so they can see you know what they're interacting with, such as monsters and stuff. Um, and it's my screen that I'm trying to obviously get the most benefit out of. Right? I don't want to have too much happening on my screen. Primarily, I have Obsidian up. When I need to change a map, I quickly switch over to Arc and Forge, make the changes, and then I switch back to Obsidian. And what that means is that when I'm in Arc and Forge, I don't really want to have to stop too much and uh, fiddle with things, find the right sound, and all that sort of stuff. I do like to have it all at my fingertips inside of Obsidian. Um, and I'll be honest, like Arc and Forge isn't that bad. They're, they're They've done some great things, like there's the Arkham Bar where you can drag sounds and all that sort of stuff. So there are solutions, but, you know, I'm a perfectionist. I like to have it all in Obsidian if I can. Um, and I have reached out to Nathan from Ark and Forge, and he's confirmed they are looking at adding this functionality to Ark and Forge in the future, which makes me super excited. Because Sirenscape does offer the functionality that I like. I just really dislike the way Sirenscape works. All right. It's terrible for searching uh, for specific sounds and everything is pre-packaged into like this concept of encounters that, you know, you have to purchase the encounter that you want and then that encounter comes with music designed for specific things. Sometimes there's NPC voices there which are used for specific encounters in specific modules. Um, but really what I want to do with something like Sirenscape is add my own music. And I can do that with Sirenscape, I know, but I need to pay a monthly subscription and then maintain that subscription. And frankly, I just don't like the way that works. But, you know, good with the bad. I'm going to show you Sirenscape today because there are some elements of their tool that I do really like. So anyway, let's jump over and let's have a look at Siren, uh, Obsidian. All right, so in front of me, what I'm doing is I'm trying to make a soundboard. All right, I want I want sound, I want cool sounds. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and actually install a new plugin. So let's come down here to settings. Uh, the plugin that we're looking for is called Media Extended. So you can come in here to browse. You can search for Media Extended. Again, go through the installation process. So press the install button press the enable button. While you're there, take a read of the plugin to see what it does. Uh, there's some demos here. And specifically what I am looking for is this uh, embedding. All right, and if you click that link, it's gonna take you to a GitHub site with some instructions on how to use this. That's, uh, that's specifically what I am uh, interested in using, to be honest. And you can see here, here's the example. So direct links, YouTubes, Vimeos, all right, all that sort of stuff. So install that and get that running um, because we'll use a lot, use some of that at some time. Now, another thing that I have uh, running in the background is Serenscape. So I have a Serenscape account. I've purchased quite a number of packs over the years. I had a subscription for a while. Uh, the subscription service 
is okay in that you know if you've got a subscription anything they release while you maintain that subscription will become yours forever so I just uh, set it and forgot about it for a while and ended up with a whole heap of packs which I thought was pretty cool um, and obviously if you've not used Serenscape before it is pretty simple you click one of these sound sets down here uh, it comes with a heap of generic sounds so you can press those you can click all right, up here it comes with specific sound effects for this actual module that we're using. So you can hear an orc crawl. All right, and then there's music. So you can click these and you can see this sets off all sorts of cool stuff. And so you can modify these as well. All right, so obviously this sound's all been provided by Sirenscape. They do make fantastic sounds. I will certainly give them that. And I really do like the audio quality that they make. I just don't like the fact that I can't add as many buttons as I like here. I don't like that I can't search all of the things. Like if I wanted a drum beat, I want to be able to search for a drum beat and just have it show me all the drum beats. But it's not how it works. And I, I get that that's not the way they've designed it. It's just uh, something that I don't like. Anyway, you come down here to the sound cog, and this is what I really like, third-party app integration. This here is fantastic, and you click this little enable button. All right, and now we've got all these plus signs, and this is where this comes really handy, because if I wanted to, for example, have, let's go into the undead bottle. Uh, we've got the undead rasp. We can click the plus button that copies the link into the copy uh, clipboard and we can then take that and use that in obsidian so let's go over to my soundboard here this is just a note that i've made with a whole heap of links um i've got an undead rasp so it's kind of like a con a combat sound i guess so i've made a um uh, a call out box here i'm gonna call undead rasp I'm gonna put my brackets. This is how you do a link, by the way. So square brackets, title square brackets. This is the text that will display. And then you've got your normal brackets there with the actual link in between it. And you can see that is the uh, the link that I copied directly from Sirenscape. We go back into editing mode. We can now come down here to combat sounds and I have a button. And if I press it, we get a sound playing through Sirenscape. It's instantaneous. Uh, it even supports like different sounds like it's got a randomizer in there all right and you can see that's really cool um, so I've gone through and I've basically just created um, just call out boxes for a number of things and you can see I've got all sorts of different reactions my players make a bad roll <laughs> love that one who doesn't love that one uh, women screaming man crying like there's just all sorts of cool things you can do here. And what I like about this is I can kind of improve on <laughs> the things I don't like about Sirenscape, right? Is I can take the sounds that I've purchased and I can add them into my Obsidian Vault in a way that is supportive of how I want to use the tool. I can categorize them how I like. I don't have to use that pre-built encounter method. Um, and I do prefer that. Now, I could also go through and start adding these things to my module. Like, so say I'm preparing uh, Horde of the Dragon Queen. Um, we can come in here and uh, we've basically got a dragon fire music. All right, and you can see that that's obviously playing really loud. But then I can do this and go stop all Sirenscape sound. And that then fades the music out. So that's fantastic. And then what else do I want to do with this? Well, what if I want it over here? So I'll drag this tab into my board. Oh, I've got all this plugin has been updated. We've got to close these. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm, this is come in in edit mode because I was in edit mode. So I'm going to right click and go preview. All right, and that now basically comes in and gives me what I'm after. So in this case here, so I'm running my dungeon, for example. Um, I've got that down here. I've got my dice roller or my initiative tracker out here so I can keep track of things. Um, but now I want to play a sound. I've just instantly got a button up here that I can press and I can come in here and press my buttons and my sound plays. So that I think is really cool. Now, obviously you need to have a Serenscape account for this to work and you have to purchase content. 
So not everybody was want to go down this path. So what other things that can you do? Well, you know, you could do a search for MP3s on the internet and oh, all right, you can just drag MP3s in. And I've turned all the sound down here. Um, all right, so we've got all of these different sort of sounds you can play and literally all you have to do to get that to work is drag in the mp3s all right and you can see the uh the concept here is it's just like a link you have an explanation mark at the start which will turn it into the player uh, a playable view and then it's just linking to the uh the mp3 and what it does is it um, it's just like an image when you copy in an mp3 it stores it into your assets folder um, and then you're good to go from there so you can obviously utilize that all right so that's really cool and where i was going with this is i wanted something to obviously play well i, I read through my module right that i was getting ready i'm getting ready to run hordes of the dragon uh, horde of the dragon queen and i come across this bit that says you know the main feature of this area is a signal drum carved from an enormous hollow log the drum can be heard for miles so i'm sitting here going well in that case it'd be cool if while my players are sort of approaching the castle and getting ready to storm in and kill everybody that occasionally they just hear drums so what i've done is in different areas of the module i've come here and i've created what we call a uh, a checkbox call out if anyone's not seen those by the way i've got a, a template with all the different ones here that you can see i'll do a uh, a video on that later but i, I basically just brought in a checkbox one um, I called it here as like this this B one, which has got a nice blue text to it, a bit of a picture, so it's easy for me to sort of see and identify. And then obviously I can have a link to in here as well, although I don't like the way I have done the link. So I've done soundboard hash drums, and what that's doing is that if I look at my soundboard, it's linking to this topic, and then it's linking to drums. So I've used the fact that I've got a uh, a title there. Uh, in order to make this work. And I don't need that in there. All right, so drums. And that allows me to link through. So if we go back to here, we're linking soundboard-drums. And if you want to see how you do that, you just go square bracket, square bracket. I'm linking to my soundboard. And then I'm linking to my drums. All right, and then when I come back here, you can see that the links to the drums and that's just linking to a sub page. So that's something you can do with everything else. But obviously I don't want my text to say linking to soundboard hashtag drums. So I can do the straight line little sign and go consider beating the drums as the players approach the castle. And now it just changes that to drums. And now as the players come through, oh, of course it's not going to work. I have broken some linking here. I am aware of this. So let me just try and fix this. Don't ever rename things, guys. Bad idea. And then we'll go link to drums. Let's see if that fixes it. Uh, it's always the case when you do a video. But anyway, what I did is I, I created a, uh, a note turned it into a folder note and then I renamed the folder note after linking to it and you know terrible idea just don't do it we go like this I go like this does this one work no it doesn't anyway I do have this working on another screen um, so it is something that you can do so that when you mouse over this thing, you can press play and it just works. And just for some reason today, I managed to have broken everything, which is always the case when you're doing a video, right? So that's a thing that you can do. And I think that's a really, really useful thing. Um, and you can add a really lot of cool content to your video. But what if you want to do something else like let's for example say that you've got a youtube uh, video that you really like and you want to play a youtube video in the background well what we can do is we go back to soundboard and this is using that plugin that we installed before so you can see here i've i've got a youtube link 
And what I've done is I've basically just gone to a uh, URL and I've copied the YouTube link to that video. And I've put my explanation marks, square brackets, text, square brackets, and then curly brackets, and then the link, and then curly brackets. And what that does, quite simple, is it brings the YouTube video. Now, I want to press play on this and show you how it works, but if I press play on this, it's going to trigger the copyright warnings um, within YouTube itself because they, they don't like you playing things, um, you know, normally. So let's just, I'll turn that sound right down so we don't have the sound. If I had the sound turned up, you would obviously hear it um, and it just plays the YouTube video. So whether you're doing this for sound or you're doing it for something else, to be honest, like that is obviously quite handy. Um, and the, the last method that I was playing around with is uh, Spotify. If you go to Spotify, there is an option within Spotify to actually sort of grab a playlist um, and you can go to share and you can go embed playlist. And when you do that, it creates the code that you copy and you can come in and paste that directly into your text and it creates an iframe and then that then creates your playlist. Now the problem that I've had with this so far is that once you click play it then asks you to log in and I haven't figured out a way to log in yet so if anyone does figure that out please do let me know um, because I think this is really cool. There's some, there's some fantastic Dungeons and Dragons playlist on Spotify that people commonly use and to be able to have that list of Spotify songs inside there um, so you can press play is really simple and good functionality and I just if you don't log into Spotify and you try and do this externally it lets you listen to a preview of the song but not the whole song so while it looks super cool right now the functionality is, is just a bit lacking from where I need it to be so yeah if anyone figures that out please do let me know I would love to see that and then yeah as you can see by uh, putting this all into sort of its own uh, tab here on the left I've got my ability to uh, sort of categorize these however I like I can very quickly come in here and press play and I can react to my players roles which I think is fantastic so uh, I also believe that there's going to be other ways of doing this so I am looking for a way to host my sort of mp3s in a folder that's not in my vault and trigger them from somewhere else I believe that should be possible um, so if anyone figures that out, please do let me know. Um, and yeah, I just, I, I quite like it. I've always wanted a soundboard. Um, I've always wanted it something that's easy, always up in the place, able for me to grab. So utilizing this method, I can now do that. And yeah, fantastic. So anyway, guys, hope you are enjoying this content. Um, please do like and subscribe using the buttons below. Um, and a huge thanks to my Patreons for all of their support and uh, really enjoying working with you guys as we go through some various projects. Um, if you are new to my videos and you are looking for copies of my templates or want access to my code, then you can uh, get that through my Patreon. So feel free to come on over and sign up if you do need assistance. And uh, I'm more than happy to uh, work with people on an individual basis there as well, um, you know, just to, to help you through any challenges that you have, um, assuming that I can figure out how to do so. So, yeah. Anyway, guys, hope you're having a great day. Go enjoy yourself and uh, I'll speak to you on the forums.